Hello everyone and thank you for joining me in part three of my downloader uh, application. Um, last time we left off I had just finished explaining some of the information and, and uh, uh, reasons behind the way I format the command line parameters. So we'll just pick up from there. Okay, once I have all my command line parameters, I go ahead and I create a new uniform resource indicator and assign it to a variable. And then I add a couple of handlers. Now these handlers are going to be uh, needed because I'm doing the download from the web page asynchronously. So I want to be able to uh, keep control uh, to the application and just not lock everything up. And then I just have a little error correction thing here. If I don't get all the parameters that I'm supposed to get, uh, things aren't going to work right. So I just go ahead and uh, show a message box and close the application. Uh, this little function here, I just call remove dots. What it does is it takes the uh, version, which comes over uh, in a in a standard format of 1.0.0.0 or whatever your application may be and it removes the dots and actually turns it into an integer and the reason I turn it into an integer is because later on when I do a compare to see if you're at the current version or uh, there's a version update it's easier to do it with integers than compare strings so it's it's pretty simple then if this um, version on the internet is larger than the version you have it must be an update okay this next sub here is download version check this is the little routine that actually gets the version from the dot uh, text file off of the web page and the get file name is a function that we'll scroll down to here in just a minute and go through that. Once I get the file name I create a temp path and I format it and then this is actually where I do the async download of the path of the excuse me of the version. This is where I get the version. So let's scroll down here to get file name because this is where a lot of the stuff is done. In the get file name I uh, create a variable called request, name it whatever you want, and I declare it as an HTTP web request and make it equal to HTTP web request dot create URL. Now if I didn't have option strict enabled here or turned off this would actually give me an error and I would have to do something like this. Oops, I can't spell. Oh, I got this backwards. Let me switch it around here. So if I had option explicit on, excuse me, option strict, this is the way I'd have to format it. But by turning option strict off, I can use this way, which is just a little easier to deal with. 
So let's go ahead and rem that one out, put this one back. I'll leave that one in there in case anybody wants any kind of reference for that. Okay, next thing I do is uh, turn off uh, caching, so there's no caching. Although I found that there's a timeout of where if I try and update several times, it'll still read from a cache or some kind of a cache rather than uh, going out and getting the file every time I click get file name. Request method is head. That's pretty much all I need. I could do uh, get here too. It doesn't really matter. Uh, turn off redirect. And this service point manager default connection limit equals 100. I added this to fix the timeouts because as I was testing I decided to go ahead and click uh, check for updates several times in a row and I found out that it would only do a couple at a time uh, and then it would work if I closed the application down, opened it back up or if I let it sit for a while. So to fix that, especially because when it did the timeout, or when it timed out, it actually just kind of like hung the application, even though uh, it was actually doing something. It was timing out, trying to get access or a response from the web page, and it would just time out and it looked like the program was frozen. This fixed that. Yeah, I'm sure if I go over 100 clicks, it's going to air out again, but nobody in your right mind should be doing that. And then I also put this in a try catch block here because this is the command right here that would cause a timeout if I clicked it too many times. If I tried to get this response too many times, it would time out. Now, once I get a response, I check to see if it's found or OK. Now, I'm doing a found, although I haven't come across that one yet. Uh, both of them mean that it can access the website and it can find the, the, the uh, information it's looking for. Most of the times, it comes back as OK. So now, once I get that status code, I really don't need the response to be open anymore, so I go ahead and close it. And then what I do is I grab the file name from the URI. And then if I do get a timeout here, the try fails and then I just display the message and I say try again later. And then from this function I return the file name. And that's up here where I get the file name. Now once it downloads, once I start the download file async, uh, this is where the add handler came in here of progress and file completed. Uh, progress As progress changes, I go ahead and update the progress bar. And then when download is complete, I check to see if the file name's nothing. Because if the file name's nothing, that means this async didn't download anything. And I just exit the sub. Now, if the file name was something and download completed, that means I must have got something. So I go ahead and I open a stream reader and I read the first line of that text file, which in my case and for this application is the version number. Here's where I remove the periods from the app uh, of the app version and from the new version. So now they're integers and I compare to see if the new version, which is the version that came off the internet, is larger than the application version that's actually running. And if it is, if it's, or excuse me, if it's not greater than, then I must have the current, uh, the, at least the current version is equal to the version that's on the web page, and there's no reason to update it. So I go ahead and I let them know that. And if there is a newer version out here, change the strings to reflect that. I enable the update button. 
Here I disabled it if the version is older or equal. I go ahead and close my stream reader. And then I also delete the uh, version file, the version.txt file. And the reason I do that is I don't need it anymore. And if I click on the button again, by deleting this, it will force a new request to go ahead and download again. One little thing I just found out, when, instead of that little caching that I was telling you about, this will cause it to go out and re-download that file again. So if by chance someone clicks on it and you just happen to be right there when you're updating it, if they click on it twice, they may get the update the second time they click. And here's the web browser app. What I did uh, for my HTML files, I've got it called the same as the application, .html. So in this case, the application is called update test. The uh, HTML file is called update test.html. The text file is called update test.txt. So by just changing the uh, extension, I'm able to get the different versions of uh, files that I need to make this application function. And then here is uh, the button update. If you click button update, I open up the second form and I do it in a, in a show dialog manner. So I can't just click on the other program first. I have to close this one. So it keeps focus on that one. And here's the uh, button one click, which is the check for updates button. I, t I uh, go ahead and download, the, I run the version check. And then I go ahead and I make these text lines visible. Because when you first start the application, I don't want them having blank information here, so I hide both. Now, once the application uh, finds that there's a new version out there and the user clicks on uh, button update, I open up this form, very simple form, downloads new version, shows the progress bar. If I click on the code behind that one, it's pretty straightforward. I open up another web client. I add handlers again for the download file and progress changed bars. Create my universal uniform resource indicator. This time I add the exe because I'm gonna actually be downloading an exe file. I also get the file name and now instead of reinventing the wheel since I have get file name here I just made it public and I call it from the other application by putting in the uh, other form in front of it so I saved myself some coding again here I create this temp path with the temporary path of my uh, computer and the file name and I go ahead and I download. Now I'm downloading the application itself. Once the download's complete, uh, I want to check. This is where I'm going to end it here now, and we'll finish up in the next episode. Thank you much for your time.